Well, 10 years ago, um, we started an audit system for meatpacking plants using a simple numerical scoring system that I designed. You measure five simple things. Percentage of cattle stunned on the first shot, percentage insensible, that's be 100%, percentage electric prod use, percentage that fall, and percentage that moo and vocalize during handling. And these critical control points measure a multitude of problems. It's very simple. It's been used by McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's for the last 10 years. It made great improvements in the slaughter plant because it avoided things like saying limit electric prod use or minimize electric prod use. It put numbers on it. And take something like falling, for example. Falling could be due to a slippery floor or it could be due to rough handling. If more than 1% of the animals fall during handling, 100 head audit, you fail the audit. In fact, actually now falling has gone down to like one in 2,000. But the problem is you have to do a 100 head audit and then you have to allow one mistake. Now, the same principle can be applied, you know, on farms for measuring handling. How many cattle fall down? How many cattle are mooing and vocalizing when you catch them in the squeeze chute and put them in the squeeze chute? Yeah, if you brand them, obviously they're going to vocalize. But you should be able to catch them in the squeeze chute with no vocalization. Um, how many animals uh, go faster than a trot? I want animals walking and trotting. I don't want them running out of the squeeze chute. I don't want them hitting gates. These are things that are measurable. Okay, what are some other very critical things? I'm also doing a talk on feedlot welfare. Two other really critical things is heat stress and mud. Heat stress, mud, and handling. Those are the two big things that are caused by conditions at the feed yard. Now, the other big things that are caused by conditions outside the feed yard are people that wean calves on a truck, and then, of course, they're going to get sick at the feed yard, um, problems with cattle that have gone through umpty ump markets before they get to a feed yard. These are problems uh, outside the feed yard. So if I was developing an audit for feed yards, I want to measure heat stress, and Terry Mater has his panting scoring, and I'm going to want to be measuring filthy, dirty cattle, and uh, those would be two, and of course, the handling measurements. Out on a ranch, I want to be looking at things like body condition scoring, and then for all phases of production, we want to look at lameness. All of these scored things are an outcome measure, what's called an animal-based outcome measure. I'm not going to tell you how to design facilities, but uh, you need to design them and manage them in such a way that you don't have a lot of muddy, dirty cattle, you don't have lame cattle or heat-stressed cattle or animals falling down in the handling facility or running into things and doing a lot of bellering. It's all outcomes. Temple, this obviously takes a lot of record-keeping, extensive attention to detail here. Are there... Are there thresholds that the, say, the cow calf producer needs to make sure and meet once they've done this scoring, this auditing? Well, on the feedlot scoring that's already available on NCBA, electric, uh, falling has to be 2% or less, electric prod score 10% uh, or less, and vocalization in catching 5% or less. On a really good operation, that electric prod use should be gotten down to 1% or 2% and then only used for the stubborn animal that absolutely refuses to go in the squeeze chute. You should not need it in any other place on, on a feed yard or a ranch. But you have to make your numbers. I hate these guidelines that say minimize electric prod use. I don't know what that means. Or handle cattle properly. I don't know what that means. So we need to have things that we can measure. Things also that I can train an auditor on in a day and a half workshop has to be simple. And people need to be doing their own internal audits, and it can be as simple as you just keep track of well, how many fell down. We've got this amount of cattle, how many fell down, um, how many animals we use electric prod on. Because when you keep score, you can tell, am I getting better or am I getting worse? Because one of the things that I've learned in all the years I've worked on handling is I'd go to some place, I'd get their handling really nice, I'd come back a year later, they thought they were doing a good job, but they weren't. The yelling and screaming and the electric prods had slowly come back. That's why we need to be measuring handling, because you, measure, you manage the things that you measure. Have you found many producers adopting these yet? Probably not to your satisfaction, but uh, is the momentum in this direction right now? When I developed the animal handling guideline, numerical scoring for meat plants, only one plant adopted it until McDonald's adopted it. And then it just swept through the industry. Another thing we've got to look at on making standards is that we don't have watered down standards. I have sat on a lot of these committees. And what I have found sometimes is the worst producers get on these committees to water it down so the absolutely worst places can pass. Now, fortunately, when I developed the animal handling uh, scoring system for the slaughterhouses, uh, we got that established before those bad operators could get on the committee and water it down. How important is all of this to the future of the beef industry? Because as this symposium re uh, reflects, this issue continues to build. 
we have to look at everything we do and say, how is this going to play at a Barnes & Noble in New York? I uh, just got off of a six-week book and movie tour, and I don't think a Muddy Feet Yard is going to look very good at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. And when I was doing a big press conference there with Claire Danes for the HBO movie, which incidentally will be on DVD in August, uh, the entertainment reporters, and this is entertainment reporters, not investigative reporters, they wanted to talk about slaughter plants and cattle issues. And the moderator had to cut it off so that the producer of the movie could get some movie questions. People were interested. But we've got to clean up some things. We've got to look and say, how could I explain this to the public? You feel positive that that's going to be able to be attained, though? Well, beef cattle actually have the fewest problems. In fact, the public's very misinformed. I talked to one lady who thought that beef was raised in veal stalls like, uh, like veal calves. I talked to several other people that thought that, well, if the cattle go to the big plants like Tyson or, or Cargill the XL, that they're raised differently from the beef cattle that uh, come out of, um, might go to Whole Foods. I said, beef cattle from ranches are raised on grass, whether they go to Tyson or they go to Whole Foods. Those cows and calves start in the same place. You know, so you get that Angus burger, they will have started in the same place. Tibble, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming to Kansas State. We well, appreciate it. Uh, great to talk to you. Thank you very much.